Welcome to Chamber Talk. I'm Heath Taylor, the President and CEO at the Dublin Lawrence County Chamber of Commerce, and I'm being joined today by Mayor Phil Best. Mayor, thank you again, thank you, as sir. always, for joining us. Appreciate We've, you uh, We're going to talk about the City Council meeting that was actually held last Thursday, um, and, and boy, we had a room full of folks. Mayor. Yes, sir. What a, what a blessing it was to see. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the way it's supposed to be. I think uh, a lot of participation and uh, hopefully the show that we're doing here is, is creating some interest and, yeah. and maybe helping some folks to come down. I've certainly noticed an increase out in the community and the number of people that are, are saying we're watching the show and we appreciate um, what's being done. So again, thank you and, and thank you for your time and, and coming Glad on the show to do, to do this. To do uh, always start out the meeting. We, we have the pledge to the flag. We have prayer. Uh, approved the agenda from the previous month, and then there were no purchases right. this month that needed to be approved, and um, and we paid the bills. There you and, go. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a few minutes. But we had a, a item number four on the agenda. Mr. Uh, John Engler with McKnight Properties made a presentation. If you right. would um, share a little bit about that with our viewers. Sure. John is uh, with McKnight Realty, who owns the uh, mall. Mm -hmm. among many other properties. And he has been a proponent uh, from the beginning of uh, trying to get our for sale uh, drink by the glass on uh, Sundays. Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, John has pretty well confirmed that there is one restaurant that is ready to come if it passes. That's Buffalo Wild Wings and that would go out at the mall. And he says he's got uh, six more that are seriously contemplating it that mm -hmm. uh, would locate in Dublin if we passed the ordinance, if the folks did. Okay, and, and if I remember correctly at the meeting, <clears throat> he mentioned, just to, to clarify, this isn't just about the mall and the mall property and McKnight properties because they actually only have two more spaces, I That's think. That's right that he could bring someone and then he's got another handful like you mentioned of, of folks that are still looking he did mention uh, i happened to be sitting next to him in the in the crowd that night that this is one of the most talked about places um in the industry and and with folks considering relocating that's right they're and they're watching and and that's good to know um he also mentioned and, and help me out with this if you can remember uh, i know we we I think we both probably have a good time trying to remember exact, but he mentioned, was it about a $2 million investment with Buffalo Wild Wings and at least 25 jobs that they would bring? That's correct. That's so, the numbers I remember. Okay, so so a fairly large investment, right. and I mean, any investment we appreciate and, and want to look forward to, right. um, but he seems to, to feel pretty certain that if we could get this passed, on, on the, the ballot, the, the Sunday by the drink sale. And again, I think it's important, Mayor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to, if you would explain right. a little bit exactly what, what that in, entails and, and what it's not. Well, um, the main thing, and, and you know, two or three years ago, we attempted to pass this ordinance, but at that time, we also had package sales. That to me was the problem in the last one. Uh, this time, we don't have anything whatsoever to do with package sales. They will not be allowed on Sunday. What this is is that restaurants that serve food, at least 50% food, can also serve alcohol okay. uh, by the drink. Okay, and I think we mentioned this before, but just in case somebody didn't see the show, so this also does not mean folks can go to a convenience store or a grocery store and That's purchase correct. alcohol. They cannot buy package okay. product at all. And, and the city will actually monitor to make sure that, that the amount of sales, food versus alcohol, there are some, some things that are in place that would, would make sure that's somebody's correct. not selling 80% alcohol and 20% food. Actually, that's already in place because all of our restaurants follow that the rest of the days too. Okay, um, and, and so from a city standpoint, if we had this passed, then, then we feel that it's not just opinion, but, but we could state that, that more than likely we would be gaining additional. Tell me how that, that impacts taxes and things like that. Where well, the, the main concerned. thing it does is your hotel motel tax will increase, your uh, sales tax will increase, which means uh, that our property taxes stay down. And, and you know, the city of Dublin and Lawrence County have a very 
low property tax as it is now, and that's where we want to keep it. And any time that you have sales tax that is paid uh, by others too, by right. people in other communities, that's a good thing for our community. Uh, it's always been, you know, no matter what side you sit on, it's always been interesting to me that someone would be against the sale by the drink on Sunday here, but then go to Macon and eat at Red Lobster or some of the other they restaurants sell that are it. selling by the drink. <laughs> you know, so it's just, that's an interesting observation. Well, and, and another observation, and, and I, I think it, it seems like in the community there's a good chance that this would pass. I think it yeah. would be a good thing for business. Um, we did um, survey our members at the chamber, and, and I mentioned this the other night at the right. council meeting, 76% uh, of the folks that, a little over 76% actually, um, voted in favor or said they would vote in favor, right. whereas 24% um, roughly, uh, there's some a decimal in there, but uh, were in opposition. So right. so it looks like about 75% maybe. And, and you know, favor. quite frankly, I don't think you will see any difference from a day in, day out standpoint of people going to restaurants to eat on Sunday or no more than you do now on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday night. I mean, I, I don't think it's uh, going to make a difference if, have, if it passes. Have you had any opportunity, Mayor, to speak with any of our law enforcement to see if they had an opinion one way or the well, other? Well, we, we asked Chief Chapman, I believe, and I, I really don't want to quote him because I don't remember exactly what he said. I don't think there was any strong opposition to it, uh, but I don't want to step right. out on that limb because I don't remember exactly but, what but Tim possibly said. he didn't say anything strong enough no, to where you would remember no, there was and, no, nothing and say to, definitely not right so, okay um, we got a few more things we're gonna cover on that agenda mayor and uh, we're yeah. gonna take a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back sounds good choose the convenience of neighbors Express and get friendly courteous service every time you visit any of our convenient locations fill up with pay at the pump and take advantage of our bigger and better selection of beverages and tobacco products. And buy 12 packs of Pepsi products, two for $6.99. Enjoy the popular crushed ice with your favorite fountain drink. Also enjoy a fresh hot breakfast. Stop by for lunch or dinner. It's always fresh, always convenient at Neighbors Express. Now located at I-16 and 441 and in Cedar Grove, providing farm fuel for all our customers. Count on the convenience of Neighbors Express. Welcome back to the show. Mayor, the other night, uh, next item on our agenda was uh, actually some recognition for one of the city employees and, and a testament to what a great job the, the folks at the city are doing where finance is concerned. Um, the award was from the GFOA, and I'll let you explain what that is and what the award was for. Okay, that's the Georgia Financial Officers Association. The award was uh, for excellence in financial uh, matters, basically. Uh, Joe Kynard, I, I, quite frankly, that's an award that uh, hadn't just started yesterday. Right. We've gotten that award for 30 years. I'm, as long as Joe has been there, we've gotten that award. And it's not an award that every city gets or even 50 or 40 or 30 percent of the cities get. It's a very small percentage of, of cities that get it and a lot of it has to do with the audit practices, the way you handle money, the transparency, uh, a lot of things that Joe and his staff, uh, great staff, have done. But uh, you know, I've got to give Joe a lot of the credit. He's he's done a good job with that. He will have been with the city 30 years next September and uh, Joe's done a good job to keep that going. That, that is amazing, and, and to think, um, you know, something that's happened for 30 years, it's real yeah. easy to, to think, well, we're going to get this year after year after year. Yeah, um, that's A lot of hard work, a lot of effort goes into a, right. an audit, um, and, and it is something to be proud to say, hey, our books are open, like you mentioned, right. the word transparency. Anybody that has any question about what's being spent, how it's being spent, exactly. it's, it's right there. So congratulations um, uh, on behalf of Joe and the, the city and all the and leadership. And I, I need to say, so, too, Nichols Colley and Associates, who have been our accountant for a majority of that time, uh, they're a strong part of that also. 
doing a, a great job there. Okay, um, I'm sure we'll have some folks that were in attendance uh, at the meeting the other night, hopefully tuning into the show. The majority of the evening um, was spent covering the issue on the, the road closures in the Linda Vista subdivision. Right. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, coming into the meeting, council had, had had some meetings and had a recommendation. Um, That's correct. If you could share some of that recommendation. Just to give you a little background, this is a issue that has been brought to council's attention for six to seven years, mm -hmm. uh, a problem of people speeding through Shamrock and on that drive and cutting through going to Springdale. Uh, the group of people led by Miss Sarah Colby came and brought it to our attention again. Uh, at that time, uh, we pretty well directed them to get traffic counts, uh, get petitions signed, all of the above. Everything we asked them to do, they certainly did. And, uh, and came back and presented it to council. Mm -hmm. Council, I appointed a committee consisting of city council, city staff, and the residents over in the Linda Vista area to come up with a solution mm -hmm. that would work. Uh, during that time, the residents on uh, Claremont and uh, Waverly mm -hmm. became aware of what was going on because of public meetings and such as that. And they had some serious concerns about what that was going to do to their neighborhood. If Certainly. we stopped the traffic going through there, was it going to affect their traffic? And then you had some people that lived in the county on the other side that didn't want it to happen simply because it was their cut through and they didn't right. want to get cut through. That wasn't a real good reason in my, in my point of view. Uh, so anyway, we got the, uh, had the meeting, uh, the committee reported to full council, and from that, the recommendation was made. Uh, the committee reported to council, and council modified the recommendation some that mm -hmm. the committee presented, and where we came to it was we were, we're going to get a baseline traffic study on the Waverly Drive, Claremont, area. Mm -hmm. January 1st, we will temporarily close Chenault and Shamrock Drive in Linda Vista. Okay. We will continue to monitor the situation both in Linda Vista and in Shamrock, oh, excuse me, Claremont and Waverly to see if there's any effects. Parallel to that, we're going to ask Matt Hatchett, who is our representative, to really lobby for us to get a red light at uh, Shamrock and, uh, excuse me, not Shamrock, Springdale, Springdale and 80. And 80. Right. Uh, we have the T-Splosh money that the citizens passed several years ago, and that's one of the projects we've identified. But DOT, in their great wisdom, have said that there's not enough traffic there to, to uh, wow. do a traffic light. Well, we don't disagree, we disagree with that. Right. We think there is, and we think it, a lot of the reason this cut through is going on is because there is no traffic light there. So those things are going to be working in parallel to each other. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully in six months, we'll have some real good, strong data to uh, see, do we keep the roads closed? Do we have a problem at the other areas? Do we need to do something there? I think we'll know a lot more at the end of that time. Frankly, I think it couldn't have turned out any better as far as a solution for both neighborhoods uh, and the right thing to do. Okay, and and let me ask you just to make sure, and I'm, I'm still a little bit new, but I'm right. familiar with the area, and just to become more familiar, I did ride down the other morning, and I gotta tell you one thing that was, I, I guess I could say this was encouraging. I'd love to see it more often, um, but I saw more signs notifying people that there's a city council meeting and what day and what time it That's was. Right. That would be nice to see that all the time yeah. in all the neighborhoods. But um, so the, the issue here is that folks are cutting through off of Hillcrest onto Shamrock to come back out onto Highway 80 is, or is it well, just to go to other? Well, they're coming from uh, and vice versa. They're coming from Sprint. They do, 
they don't want to go to Springdale and go to the intersection of 80 and Springdale. Okay. So because of that, both ways of traffic are, are cutting through the Shamrock Drive. When, when Linda Vista was developed in the 70s, there was not that problem. Okay. There was no destination on either end. Right. So it was not. It was just a neighborhood that had a through road, and it was not an issue. That, in fact, Springdale Road was a dirt road. Okay. So that's you know, times have changed the traffic flow. So these two um, roads that will be closed are the entrance only from Shamrock into these neighborhoods. So you're from still Springdale into those two into that neighborhood. Shamrock is one of the roads. Shamrock and, and Chenault are the two roads. Okay. Both of those dead end into Springdale. Okay. So those two roads will be closed, so there will be no entrance from Springdale into there. Okay. Okay. And and then um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to take one more commercial but, break, and, and okay, we'll come I'll, back. I do want to say one other thing about that when we come back. Okay. We'll, we'll be right back after our commercial break. When my husband experienced chest pain, I knew we had to go to the ER at Fairview Park Hospital because it had an accredited chest pain center. Chest pain isn't like a broken arm or a high fever. They treat chest pain like the serious condition it is, and they treat it fast. And it was a good thing we knew the difference because my husband was in cardiac arrest. Oh, I was fine. Now he is. Treat chest pain like chest pain. Choose the ER at Fairview Park Hospital. Welcome back to the show, Mayor. We were discussing the Linda Vista yep. subdivision and the, the, uh, all the energy, I guess, and efforts yep. that went into the meeting the other night. And I think you had one more well, thing I just, you wanted you know, to share about that. You get to really, it's, it's an interesting seat we sit in, in, in the city council and mayor's seat. And you get to see uh, folks and their passions for, for issues and their uh, interest in issues. But uh, the crowd the other night, the one thing I want to say about, you had opposing views there, mm -hmm. or you had concerns there. Sure. Uh, but I was very, very pleased with the civility of the group. Now, I'm not surprised, but you know, a lot of times you can get there and you have can a have mess. a strong opinion, and, mm -hmm. it, and it can be ugly. But both, I'd like to commend both neighborhoods Certainly. because they both respected each other, uh, didn't try to talk over each other, and everybody did their point of view, and then we uh, left from there. I think you absolute spot on with that. Um, yeah. And to think, you know, a lot of these folks, because it was so crowded in the room, um, so folks on both sides of the fence there were sitting as close as you and I right now. That's right. And, and were very respectful of one another. When, when people were speaking, there were no outbursts. Um, That's right. So, so yeah, kudos to the citizens. And, and um, I think it was mentioned to, and, and we also want to point out on the show today, um, for the folks in those neighborhoods, call your representatives and, yeah. and, uh, and see what we can get done as far as getting that light. That Absolutely. would go a long ways in, in solving Matt some of these and, issues. And Matt, so. I, I'm not throwing him under the bus. I mean, he's, he will help us. Right. Uh, he will try to help us. He's mad as uh, I made him aware the next day that he would be getting calls and comments. So we need to we need him we need him to help us lobby our our efforts. And, and let's say again, Mayor, um, great job for those those folks that, that got together, they did their homework, they approached council in, a, in the, the right manner, um, in a very professional manner, very, and, very. and did the things they were supposed to do. The, the folks in the adjoining neighborhood, I'm sure, in the meantime, right. are going to do the things that they need to do. Um, right. and, and so we want to encourage you um, and anyone, you know, if you, if you have an issue, if you have a concern, that's the manner in, in which to handle it and bring it before council. Right, and, and the council uh, took everyone's uh, thoughts to, seriously. They uh, really did. And, and Gerald Smith, as I think he made the comments, you know, he said he's been fighting for this for six years, he knows of. So. Well, and again, you mentioned yeah. Gerald. Gerald made the comment the other night. I remember him saying, you know, um, this isn't exactly what I wanted to happen the way I wanted it, it to happen, 
but he said, I'm, I'm happy with the outcome yeah. of, of what we're doing here, and he felt like it was a, a joint effort and a yeah. conversation there. So um, anything else we need to add on the, the conversation there? We'll see in six months. We, uh, we had a next item that we talked about was the 2016 CDBG application, and uh, that was for some assistance um, in another right. area of Dublin. That's actually... Uh, Usually, typically, a city will get a CDBG grant every other year or an opportunity to apply for one, and we always apply for it and we always get it. However, because of some other designations that our city's gotten, we had the opportunity to apply for two. So uh, uh, Carter and Sloop, an engineering firm out of Forsyth, helped us to file the application and were successful on doing some sewer and water improvements on Marcus Street. Fantastic. Um, the next thing that's on here, maybe we can talk about this for just a minute, um, was the resolution allowing the city manager to approve purchase and acquisition of necessary right of way um, for the T Splost on Hillcrest. And this was um, projects uh, up to and including $15,000. Can you talk to me for just a minute about that project and when we should start seeing some dirt moved and, and exactly what's sure. going to happen there? Uh, well, first of all, let me say that as our, our uh, policy is a little old, the three, right now our policy is that anything over $3,000 the city manager has to get council approval for. That's probably 25 to 30 years old. We need to raise that anyway across the board. But in this case, this was just for the right-of-way. Okay. Uh, we did have one council member, Mr. Benny Jones, that was wanting to stay involved with it and no. So what what we did was this council approved his representing us mm -hmm. along with Lance to review the right-of-way acquisitions uh, over a period of time. Uh, the project itself, I think, and, and I might be misquoting this a little bit, but I think it's... Uh, due to break ground or let in the uh, end of 17, maybe the fall of 17, okay. right away acquisition ought to start soon, Okay, real soon. Mayor, do you expect any pushback or um, have you had any opposition of, of where some of these right away purchases might need to take place? I, you know, we had two or three public hearings. Uh, we had maybe one or two people that had some questions about it or opposed it. Uh, which is remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had, when we start putting the stakes out, people get a little excited then because it's one thing to look on a map and another in thing to see reality. in the yard. Right. Uh, and, but some of those are easements, construction easements, like they will just be used during the time of construction right. and Temporary. then that's gone. Uh, so I think for the most part, everybody's happy, uh, I'm sure there's some people that's going to have some questions, but that's why we have the group to go out and talk to them about it and try to come up with a resolution. Okay, and and this widening will be from from one end. Is it south? It'll Jefferson, be it'll be way? actually four lane from 80 to 441. Okay, it'll be three lane from uh, 80 to uh, Industrial Boulevard. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Um, again, as always, Mayor, I'd like to give you a minute if there's anything else you want to share with our viewers or, or anybody else. Maybe, hopefully, we didn't overlook thanking anybody for their hard well, work and their efforts. But The last know. day or two, I've just been uh, involved in several things, as you always are, too, that are coming down the pike from everything from Art Dublin is having a show here soon at the Carnegie uh, the Chris Kendall market will be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. Jingle and mingle, Thanksgiving, a lot of activities, a lot of activities going on. I just want to encourage people to come and enjoy Dublin. Uh, have a good time. Enjoy yourselves. There's a lot of great venues downtown that, uh, and all over town that, that uh, we hope you'll just come and have a good time and enjoy each other's company. Absolutely, and I want to mention we have uh, Jingle in Your Pocket and uh, Shop Small Saturday are some projects we're working on at the Chamber just to do exactly what you mentioned, to, yeah. to enhance our, our holiday season and our, our shopping and uh, encourage folks to shop local here. And uh, I believe you'll hear more from that in the future on TV35 here. They're, they're going to be working with some folks to 
uh, see what we can do to promote and enhance business and, and commerce during the holiday season. So as always, we'll thank you for joining the program and remind you that it's a great day for business in Dublin, Lawrence County.